A dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. John Calvin. Telling a woman that she can't be an elder is a nonsense rule. If they claim to be in the body, we let them have it. Donald Trump is going to win in 2020 by an absolute landslide. Six Christianizing the American dream. Because the New Testament is utter horse <laughs> It was created by a bishop and a an emperor. That's a fact. That's like established religious fact. Sawing is a blessing from God to make you rich. It's well, you know, like a lottery ticket. The Lord spoke to my heart. Then very few times I've ever heard God be this articulate with me. And I'm telling you word for word, these words came into my heart. I'm not asking you witness me. I'm asking you to brush his hair. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Master's Dog, <clears throat> episode 123, my apologies for, uh, I don't have a, a cough button, I wish I did, so I just have to lean away from the mic, uh, episode 123, I am your host Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, aka the Evangelical Norm, Master's Dog is a podcast just as the, the introduction video says, the quote at the beginning from John Calvin, when God's truth is attacked, I bark. Um, I would be a coward if I remained silent. So whenever I come across anything that, of interest that uh, is attacking, uh, twisting, uh, contradicting God's truth, I will take the time to sit down and talk about it. This podcast started as one called Faith and Beliefs Refuted. And I was only doing response videos to the Saints Unscripted, who are formerly known as the Three Mormons podcast. And they started a segment called Faith and Beliefs, where they were initially went through the articles of faith. And I said, I want to respond to all these videos and show how even according to their statement of faith, the articles of faith, they do not fall in line with mainstream Christianity. And so then I did make the, the commitment that I would respond to all the videos when they went on and continued to move on after the articles of faith and kept going on into issues of doctrine and so on. I said, I'm going to respond to all of these videos. And to this day, I have continued to do that. I have at least responded in some sense of whether I actually respond to the video, because some of them just really didn't make a whole lot of sense to need a response. They were either pointless, uh, had really nothing to do with doctrine or anything like that, or they were just silly. So there's been one or two where I just threw up the screenshot of the video that they had done, said, this is is not even worth the time because this is why it's not true, and then moved on to the next thing. So, but... Today we are back to that. We are responding once again to the uh, Mormons Faith and Beliefs segment of the the Saints Unscripted podcast. I'll get to it in a minute. I'll figure out what I'm trying to say. And so, um, and I I give all that background because I've got a lot of new subscribers to the YouTube channel. And I owe that to those of you who have shared and liked the videos and who have subscribed already. If you are new here, please Hit the subscribe button, hit that notification, get all the content that is released here. Uh, Hit the like, hit the share. That makes Mr. Algorithm send this video out to more and more people who might like to see it. So I appreciate all that you guys have done in the past. Those that are faithful to sit and watch every one of these videos, I very much appreciate it. So getting into this week's episode, David, on this week's uh, episode of Saints Unscripted Faith and Beliefs, he talked about what the Mormons teach on and their their position, basically, basically their their official position on evolution. So there's actually going to be some interesting commentary on this as we get through it. Uh, and as usual, what I'll do, I'll let it play. I'll stop it when I want to talk about it, make some comments, and we'll just do commentary um, as it goes through and show how it does not line up with what God's Word says. So. All that being said, here is our friend David Snell from Saints Unscripted. Ah, what a fine day for science. Hey everyone, today we're going to be scratching the surface of that good old rivalry between science and religion. I don't believe in God. I believe in science. Specifically. 
Okay, so first things first. There really isn't a rivalry between science and religion. Um, there is a rivalry between misinterpreted data and rightly interpreted data, I would say. Um, but science, especially, I mean, what we can look at as absolute observable science does not contradict religion. Where you get into the, the conflict with religion is speculative science. Science that cannot be proven, which evolution is. It's science that cannot be proven. Because we can't go back. Well, one, there is no three billion years ago um, on this planet's timeline. This planet is only at the most 10,000 years old. Go ahead and send your comments. Um, but we can't even go back to 10,000 years ago and experiment, do controlled experimentation and so on to show anything that evolution happened or occurred or any of those things. So with that being said, there's no real, uh, confrontation or contradiction or conflict between science and religion. Specifically, we're going to be talking about what the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches about evolution. Let's do it. All right, so in the words of an article published by the church aptly titled, What Does the Church Believe About Evolution? We read, The church has no official position on the theory of evolution. Organic evolution or changes to species inherited traits over time is a matter for scientific study. Okay, now here's your, here's your first problem for the LDS people. They've made statements like God has done nothing, yet le lest he speak through his prophets some something along those lines and then Ezra Taft Benson in the 70s I, I want to say 74 76 somewhere in there gave a speech called 14 fundamentals of the prophet and basically said the prophet can speak on anything he doesn't need to be qualified to speak on these things so many prophets in the past have tried to speak on the issues of science and so on joseph and, and brigham both taught that people lived on the moon and the sun and so you know we we get that issue where they've spoke about uh science without being qualified and have kind of made themselves look silly but according to the the 14 fundamental speech the prophet can speak on anything. So to say that something is a matter, matter for scientific study and not something that the church would have a position on doesn't really make sense. Nothing has been revealed concerning evolution. In other words, it is not a doctrine of our faith. Tons have been revealed. It's called the Bible. That evolution is true. And it's not a doctrine of our faith that evolution is not true. You can be a faithful Latter-day Saint and believe whatever you want when it comes to evolution. So feet are planted firmly in midair. That said, it is no secret that evolution is taught at church-owned schools. My wife and I recently went to the Life Science Museum on BYU campus, and what did we find? A whole exhibit about evolution. That's evolution. Evolution has been taught at BYU for more than half a century. So while the church itself has no official position on it, current leaders are certainly fine with it being taught and obviously don't feel that it poses any kind of insurmountable problem to faith in God. But, but it should. And we'll talk about that later. There are a lot of people who worry that evolution and, for example, the scriptural creation accounts cannot coexist. Where do dinosaurs fit in? Was there life and death before Adam and Eve? Were they really the first humans on Earth? How do we reconcile this stuff? Well, frankly, you can approach that issue however you best see fit. God creates dinosaurs. God destroys dinosaurs. God creates man. Man creates dinosaurs. Again, the church has no position on evolution, so we don't have definitive doctrinal statements on this or that concern about how evolution jives with scripture. That said, you may want to consider some of the church's more recent statements on this subject as sort of a framework for you. For example, in a 2016 article titled, What Does the Church Believe About Dinosaurs? We read, 
Did dinosaurs live and die on this earth long before man came along? There have been no revelations on this question, and the scientific evidence says yes. I would say there is scientific evidence that says no, that dinosaurs existed at the same time as man. And again, the fact that I thought God didn't do anything without revealing it through his prophets. Why would he not? If this question is coming up, why would he not reveal it to his prophet, his man here on earth, who speaks authoritative for God? Why would he not? Why would he leave something that is so divisive and so um, explicit in its one denial of God, which is evolution? Why would he let it continue to just sit and not be addressed by his prophet? You can learn more about it by studying paleontology, if you like, even at church-owned schools. Now, pay attention to the next couple of sentences because they're super important. The details of what happened on this planet before Adam and Eve aren't a huge doctrinal concern of ours. The accounts of the creation in the scriptures are not meant to provide a literal scientific explanation of the specific processes, time periods, or events involved. Okay, so here again, we run into a problem because, I mean, even your, their temple ceremony has Jesus and Michael coming down and doing the creation and the seven days and, and all of this. So they literally do have a position. They're just wavering. They're, they're waffling on it. They're, they're completely squishy in this because they're trying to walk on both, both sides and they're not willing to make a stand. Again, within Christianity, we have people who do the exact same thing, but yet we do have people who are willing to make that stand. Answers in Genesis, Ken Ham, uh, Dr. Jason Lyle, uh, I could name, if I could remember their names, I could name more. But then Bible-believing churches who hold to a young earth creationist belief, uh, Christ Church, Doug Wilson, Refuge Church in Ogden, Utah, Apologia Church, all of these, these churches that are like, we are looking at God's word and what it says, and we are holding firm to what the word of God says. So with these things, the Mormons definitely do have a position, uh, and, and, but they have two positions. They're tr again, they're trying to play both sides, which is common for Mormonism because it's all a deception from its foundation to its current uh position in politics and, and the world and so on it's always been a deceiving deceptive religion it's tried to hide so many things until the advent of the the internet and then now they have to come out and and retcon all of this stuff to cover up the things that they tried to cover up so the, to say that they don't have a position, but then they do have a position, but yet in their religious portions, they have another position. Again, there's just a, a huge discompobulation. God is not the author of confusion. And if God literally had a man here on earth that he was currently providing revelation to, why would he not clear up that confusion? In other words, science and religion are two very different things with two very different purposes. No, they are not. Science falls into submission to God. Because science would not even exist if God didn't exist. You couldn't have the scientific method without God existing and creating the way that he did. If they're two separate things and two different, then they're both worthless. Sometimes we think that because the scriptures are true, everything stated in them is absolute scientific fact. But the truth is, the Bible was never meant to be a science book. Perhaps attempting to force one to fit with the other is like cramming a square peg into a round hole. No, no, that's not. Because again, now to even put in the Bible is true, to put it in the air quotes, you've just called into, you've done, ex I just talked, did my false teacher of the week and talked about how the what false teachers do, what, what heretical groups do, is the first thing they do is they call into question God's word, and then they, they do what Satan did in the garden, and then they try to remove the penalty for sin, which Mormons do. The LDS Church has done. 
called into question the word of God, and then basically everybody gets to go to heaven, no matter what, if they repent or not. They get to go to one level of heaven, so there is no punishment for sin. Surely, you shall not surely die. But to say that, that, that it's not, to believe that it's true, but then not to say that the things are, are fact in it, well, it, is it or isn't it? Because we can see things that, no, no the, science, the, the Bible was not written to be a science book. But where it interacts with science as we see it, it is always correct. Except for where people take this particular issue. And then they want to say, well, it's not. Or it's, you know, it's figurative, or it's this, or it's, you know, literally figurative. That's an argument I had one time, which was great. If we're going to believe the Word of God, if we're going to believe the genealogies of Jesus going back to Adam, then we have to believe in the creation. And then we have to believe in the creation story. And we have to believe that God did it the way he did it. Because if he didn't, then if death is in the world before Christ's atonement, then Christ's atonement for our death means nothing. Did the creation really occur within six 24-hour days? Yes. Not necessarily. Was Adam literally made out of dirt? Not necessarily. Yes. Was Eve literally created out of a rib taken from Adam? Yes. Not necessarily. The scriptures tell why man was created, but they do not tell how. What are you talking about? It does. <laughs> it literally does. Now you're, what you're doing is you're trying to highlight your Bible uh, with black marker. You're trying to use a black highlighter to mark sections of scripture. It literally, you just discounted it. You just said, oh, well, it does tell me how, but I just don't believe that. Well, uh, go stand out on the highway and don't believe in trucks. See how well that does for you. The word of God is the word of God. And you either hold to it or throw the whole thing out and quit wasting your time. Go hang out with the satanic temple up on the Capitol steps with their satanic knights and blah, 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 blah. That just make stuff up as they go along because essentially that's what you're doing. We know, those who know, know that that's what the Mormon church has done. That's what Joseph Smith did. He just made stuff up as he went along. And now you're literally taking the word of God that says how he created. And you're saying, well, it tells us why, but it doesn't tell us how. But it does tell you how. So you're literally lying to people right now, David. You are telling a lie. Boldface on YouTube. Congratulations. Though the Lord has promised that he will tell that when he comes again. Doctrine and Covenants 101 teaches, In that day when the Lord shall come, he shall reveal all things, things which have passed and hidden things which no man knew, things of the earth by which it was made and the purpose and the end thereof, things most precious, things that are above and things that are beneath, things that are in the earth and upon the earth and in heaven. The time will come when we have answers to those questions. We have the answers. You just don't want to deal with it because it puts you in a situation where you actually have to hold to those things or hold to nothing, which essentially you have to hold to nothing because there's so many other things in Scripture that, that the Mormons contradict that if you're going, to, if you're going to, to stand firm on one, you have to stand firm on all. But if you're going to waffle on any of them, you might as well just throw the whole thing out. Quit playing make-believe. But in the meantime, we'll let science worry about the what's and the how's. Religion will worry more about the why's. And we'll take truth from both sources. Now, I will mention that when it comes to the church's position on evolution and some of the questions that stem from it, some people have understandably received some mixed messaging over the years. Casual conversations about evolution can sometimes become sort of a chess game of statements from opinionated past leaders on this subject. B.H. Roberts said this, but Joseph Fielding Smith said this, but John Witzow said this, but Bruce R. McConkie said this, but James E. Talmadge said this. <laughs> There's a long and frankly fascinating history behind the debate on evolution in the church. We'll probably dedicate a future episode to that topic. But I will say that even though the church has no official position on this subject, and while it is taught in our schools, some fairly anti-evolution statements from decades past have persisted into at least 
least one teaching manual that is still around today. So with all the opinions and with all of the questions out there that we don't have answers to, it makes sense that the church has no official position on the subject. But they have a position in a teaching manual that is would be a position, but they don't have a position. This is why people should get out of the LDS church. I mean, if there, if no other reason, the fact that they cannot give a straight answer on a whole lot of things is problematic, especially when you have somebody that claims to receive personal revelation from God. What is the point of having a prophet, revelator, and seer if they don't get prophecy revelations or see anything? They can't answer a simple question like this. Could that change in the future? Sure. The restoration is ongoing, scientific discovery is ongoing, and revelation is ongoing. Our articles of faith teach that God has yet to reveal many great and important things to us. There are lots of questions we don't have answers to, and you'll notice that in this video I'm intentionally trying not to go down too many rabbit holes or speculate too much about some of these unanswered questions. For example, earlier we read from the church's website, the accounts of the creation in the scriptures are not meant to provide a literal scientific explanation of the specific processes, time periods, or events involved. Okay, well if that's what these accounts are not, what are they? How should we read these chapters in Genesis if not as 100% face value scientific fact? That's something we'll get into a bit in the future, but in the meantime, if you want to dive deeper into this subject and come to your own conclusions, please, please, please check out the resources in the YouTube description below. Oh. Started over, sorry. Um, yeah, so there you go. Evolution, Mormons don't know. They just don't know. They have a man that is supposed to be able to get anything from God. They have a book that is supposed to be the most correct book of any book, and a man can get closer to God by his precepts than anything else. They have a Bible that is in front of them that talks about the six-day creation, and it's not a poetic thing. It's not a figurative thing. God is just specific when he talks about those days. 24-hour days. That's what the Bible says. So now if you're going to discount that, Again, throw the whole thing out because if you can't accept the creation story of how God created and how Adam and Eve came about, then when if, if they're not actual literal people that were created by God, then how did the ge genealogies of Jesus get to Jesus? When did myth become historical? When where where was the 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 connection? between the mythological character in the Bible and the literal, was it Abraham? Was it David? Was it, you know, which one of them had a mythological father who wasn't actually real, was just uh, a figure that, that was used to describe all of mankind. And again, if the Bible says that by one man's sin, death entered the earth, by one man's sin, how could there be death before Adam? Right? Because then you got to discount that part of the atonement story, the, the plan of salvation. Even the LDS plan holds that in there. So we have to dismiss it. That is why I have been hardcore on young earth creationism since before my pastor was there. Because I see that the fingers of, of the evolution story and that issue in scripture reaches into the essential doctrine of salvation. So, there you go. If, I mean, there's mass confusion if you can't answer a question like that. I firmly believe that the Bible can answer that question. I firmly believe that those who believe that this planet is 3.4 billion whatever years old and that all these different things that evolved and so on where there is no step-by-step -step evidence, you'll never see an actual example of 
the geological ladder or whatever they put in the books of this le- this era, this le- era, this level. The only place that actually exists is in a book. You can go nowhere on this planet and take a cross section of the Earth's crust and get all of those layers that they claim. You can go nowhere on this planet and find connectors, the, the interstitial species from one to another to another where this apparent evolution from bacteria to complex uh, life forms occurred. We see differentiations in species. We see that all over birds and, you know, Darwin's finches and so on. And we see that among species, but nowhere ever in history do we see one species literally becoming a different species. We see them uh, microevolution within kinds, within species. We can, we've seen, you know, the one, the famous one that I've always been confronted with is nylon eating bacteria or something to that effect. And where the, it's supposedly it evolved to where it couldn't uh, exist on eating nylon and then it started to. And look, it's a different, no, it's still a bacteria. It just developed the ability to eat something different. It would be like if I were lactose intolerant and my child was able to drink milk. They're not a different species. They just have a different disposition to what they can eat. So, again, nowhere do we see any connecting thing from a dog becoming a horse. (coughs) Or a, a, a monkey or primate or anything becoming a human we don't see that it doesn't exist it's not there because the bible is true and we can trust it and anyone who will call that truth into question you should get away from and it's why i always encourage you my lds friends or if you are investigating the lds church run because there is no salvation within the false doctrines of that institution And the God that they worship, the Christ that they worship, the Holy Spirit that they follow after are contradictory counterfeits, not the true God of the Bible. They're idols fashioned and created by Joseph Smith and the the imaginations of other leaders after him into a uh, composite conglomeration of emotional need for what they want their God to be. And that's all I have to say about it. So thank you guys for taking the time to hang out with me, enduring all through this whole thing. Um, And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.